I think a lot of us are just exhausted and tired of the Transformers brand. Some of them are fun and others are just, well, not great. And when the trailer for Transformers 1 came out, I thought, oh my god, this is going to be awesome. It's from the director of Toy Story 4 and it's an animated Transformers film taking all place on Cybertron. And that trailer sucked. Was not good whatsoever. The animation, none of it was selling me. And my god... I can't believe I'm saying this. This is the best Transformers movie yet. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing Transformers 1, a movie that is the untold origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron, better known as sworn enemies in the future movies, but once were friends bonded like brothers who changed the fate of Cybertron forever. Ever. Now, this is a non-spoiler review. I'm not going to sit here and spoil the movie for you because obviously this is an early review or if you're watching this later, maybe you haven't seen the movie yet as it has come out. But all I can say is that this is flat out the best Transformers movie yet and it really blew me away from certain different aspects. It has the high octane action, it has the hilarious moments, and it has a lot of entertaining values but the movie is a lot darker and a lot deeper than I expected it to be. And I'm very excited to talk about it today. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get into the pros on this movie. And flat out, first off, I want to talk about is the director, Josh Cooley, who some of you might love, some of you might not really enjoy his movie making at all of course he did do toy story 4 which is a film that i was actually a really big fan of now if you followed my channel for a while you know i am a massive toy story fan that was one of the films that i was the most worried about in my entire career of anything filmmaking and josh cooley really blew me away with what he did in that film especially thematically how much that film resonated with me and i wasn't expecting that at all when going to watch that film and kind of the same thing happens with Transformers 1 because Transformers 1 thematically, that's like one of the big aspects that I really want to get out of the way is how deep the film actually really much is. And obviously the big surface level approach to that is the relationship, the friendship aspect and how deep they actually dive into that and how you actually really feel for Optimus Prime and Megatron. And even though you know what's going to end up happening down the road, seeing the little breaks to their relationship really hurts hard. I'm sure a lot of us have ever had that friend that maybe just started drifting from us from one way or another, whether it could be drugs if you want to get into that, or violence, or just being around the wrong people, or systematically maybe something happened to them that broke them. And no matter what you did to try and help them, it just, nothing could help. They were already broken bad and gone far off the path. And for me, that is something that really resonated and broke my heart from seeing how that all transformed, no pun intended, in this movie. And I think Josh Cooley did a great job because it could have been very surface level and it wasn't. Alongside that, the film also focuses on social hierarchy and class structure, which again is nothing that we've ever seen specifically even in the transformers movies i'm not going to say the franchise because i can't remember that much in the animated series and some of the comics but from memories past specifically from movies and what most people are used to within the transformers films and what the general going audience is used to that's a new territory and i thought for me that brought some eye-opening pieces to the transformers universe that absolutely added layers that are needed and more things that actually built on the world building and the mythology of Cybertron and Josh Cooley did all that. Now, if you j dive away from the thematical avenues of this film, another thing that Josh Cooley does a great job on is actually building up the world building of Cybertron, of the Transformers, of the Autobots, of everyone on this planet and how it all works, how, what feeds them, what pushes them what's the day in the life of some of these characters and how are they structuring and living in this society and that was again something that maybe i would have liked to see a little bit more of and we'll talk a little bit about that in my mixed aspects but it's something that absolutely shook me i wasn't expecting and i think josh cooley does a great job on all of that and diving deep into characters and things that you never really realize to see on top of that all it is a fast-moving movie, 
with really hilarious moments with almost every joke, I would say for the most part, either getting a really good laugh out of you or a great smirk. And alongside that high octane action, when the action finally kicks in, it is point blank phenomenal. Now, when I went to Comic-Con, they showed us some footage and the footage even looks better now in the original, in the actual film. And one of the things that really like took me by storm, and I, I just say this, is that each act of the movie is like effortlessly paced in such a fine-tuned thing. So like in the first act, you get this awesome race sequence that absolutely brought back like falling with style from the first Toy Story. And there's like one moment to that where it just like kind of gave me goosebumps and reminded me of that immediately. But that entire like chase sequence in the first Toy Story, like you kind of get something like that in the first act of this movie. And then the second act kind of has another kind of star powering, moving stuff forward and it gets a little darker. And then the third act comes and it's action packed. It's emotional. It's a journey that really feels earned as it comes to that point. And it just kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. And how great the action was and how quickly paced it was and how just damn good it was. And another thing that I wasn't expecting at all, and this is one thing that I was really against going into this movie, was not having Peter Cullen voice Optimus Prime. My name is Optimus Prime from the planet Cybertron. I'm all open for new actors coming in to try and do the voice, but I rolled my eyes when I saw Chris Hemsworth was going to be voicing Optimus Prime. It felt like it was another one of those classical things. Get a very big actor to voice an animated character. I mean, we just saw that with Chris Pratt and Garfield. But I, again, eat every type of word that I said prior to the release of this movie. And even when it was announced, while I was excited, but any of those pre-notion thoughts I had, I'm shocked. You know, Chris Hemsworth talked about it in San Diego Comic-Con saying how much that he worked with Peter Cullen to nail down a younger voice of Optimus Prime. And even in some of the clips and the trailers, I was like, ah, you know, it kind of sounds like Chris Hemsworth. I don't know. The final product of this movie, yes, definitely still, for the most part, sounds like Chris Hemsworth at times. But then it, like, does something. And something, like, clicked into me. And I went back and listened to, you know, Peter Cullen voicing Optimus Prime. And they really nailed down exactly what they said. A younger version of Optimus Prime. A younger version of Peter Cullen's voice as Optimus Prime. And they did it. And Chris Hemsworth did a phenomenal job. The heartbreak in his voice. The, the championing. The hopefulness that you want from Optimus Prime. It's all there. Alongside this, Brian Tyree Henry is phenomenal as D16. But further known as and soon to be Megatron. Again, fantastic breaking a character breaking bad there are certain moments in here where his voice trembles and you can just feel the emotion pouring out phenomenal voice acting scarlett johansson's pretty solid in here i liked her for the most part wasn't like the most mind-blowing thing keegan michael key plays bumblebee in here and i thought he was a lot of fun uh you can definitely see that like this is bumblebee with a voice and i kind of liked it in some ways it kind of reminded me of donkey from shrek like there's literally one moment where they're all walking and he just won't shut up and I dug it. The rest of the cast to be good as well. Lawrence Fishburne, Steve Buscemi, of course, even John Hamm. But for me, this film really centers in that main friendship between the Orion Pax, who, again, will be Optimus Prime one day, and D-16, who will be Megatron one day. Their friendship and how that breaks. And knowing what's going to happen in the future. It, ju it just really brings an emotional resonance to it all. And I think, again, for anyone who's ever had a friend that has drifted away from them for one way, shape, or form that you could not control, no matter what you did to keep that friendship at hold, this film will hit you very hard. And I love that it dove into that. It dove into, like again, systematical hierarchy. Great action. Great humor. This movie was awesome. And alongside that, of course, it's an animated movie. There's no human characters. That's something that a lot of us Transformers fans have been wanting. And it really feels fresh to have a whole film taking place on Cybertron. To learn more about the mythos and the mythology of it all. And right alongside that, the animation is stunning. 
Sometimes the detail on the Transformers like actually kind of took me back. Sometimes uh, some people might find it a little bit cheap. I didn't. I like the blockiness of it and specifically the world of Cybertron and how it's built up. It is its own unique animation and it's something that may seem familiar, but it's more attention to detail than I honestly expected it to be. And for me, Transformers 1 about nailed everything that I wanted from this movie. And it was such a great, great surprise. But let's talk about some of my mixed aspects. And this is some things that I found some people might not like as much as I did. And maybe just some things I would have liked to see a little bit more of. And really much, I think the only thing that I kind of keep coming back to is I find the film is a tad bit rushed. Just at certain points. It seems talking to other people, it did bother some of them a little bit more. I feel maybe 10 more minutes of this film would have been a little bit more flowing specifically in the third act, but it's very much a mixed aspect. I might watch this film again and not have that issue whatsoever. It's just something that was mentioned to me that I thought about and I was like, you know what? I could, I can understand that. I kind of felt that at times, but it never took away from anything I was watching in this movie and it still nailed the emotional ending and specifically the emotional avenue. Alongside that, one other thing to mention, there are two post credit scenes, one gag, one thing that I'm specifically assuming will set up for the future per this film does good at the box office, which it absolutely should be supported. I highly recommend it. Which is Transformers 1 is the best Transformers movie. I say this as someone who has enjoyed a lot of what Michael Bay has done and specifically loves Bumblebee. But I also know that there's a lot of crap in the Transformers movie universe. And I know that that original 80s Transformers movie is awesome. But the, the high octane action, the hilarious moments, and most importantly, the emotional deep with its thematics on friendship and its layers on a social hierarchy and class structure brings to life some of the most eye-opening pieces to the Transformers universe. This is truly more than meets the eye. So with all that said, I'm going to give Transformers 1 an A. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy.